Well, good morning. Welcome to the online worship service at Cottonwood Baptist Church here on May 31st. And glad that you're with us this morning. This will be the last of our Zoom church services, we hope, because next week we are going to meet and worship in the sanctuary. Uh, we'll be following all of the guidelines that the government has set out for us, which means we sit separately as family units, so at least six feet apart from each other. I don't think it'll be a problem for us. Uh, we, we'll have plenty of hand sanitizer and other sanitizers there to clean surfaces, and uh, we'll have masks uh, for those of us who feel like that's uh, helpful or appropriate. Uh, that, that would be voluntary. But sure, looking forward to, I know we can't uh, hug or touch or anything like that, but I'm sure looking forward to uh, seeing everybody. We can at least smile and say hello and wave and, and that sort of thing. We're going to start this morning with a song, Goodness of God.
Okay, and with the scripture this morning is in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. We have some names on our prayer list. I know there are others that we are not aware of, but of the ones we do have, um, I think Mike Easter we was mentioned a week ago, and he had surgery and has now been released. I believe he's back to work. Carol Darch uh, is uh, recovering from seizures or dealing with seizures, so we want to pray for Carol Darch. Uh, Julie Atkinson is going to be seeing an oncologist this, in the near future, so we need to pray for Julie. The young boy Klein, who is uh, 10 years old, lives in Fort Worth, and as uh, we know him through my daughter, uh, good report this week in that he is, his body is producing white cells, white blood cells, which is needed to combat the leukemia that he has. And finally, Bill and Peggy Barrow, Bill and Peggy Barrow, I'm not sure what, um, their needs are but god knows and uh, we'll be praying for them if you would join me in a word of prayer dear god thank you for uh, the opportunity that we have to worship even in this medium the zoom meeting medium i thank you for toya for helping us to put this together lord we lift up all of these on the prayer list that we have and others that haven't been mentioned but are on the minds of our members and god you know every circumstance that there is involved and we pray that you would give grace and and compassion and wisdom to the medical providers and uh and god i pray that your calmness and your steadfastness would be evident that god you would just show yourself mighty in each of these situations i pray this in jesus name Amen. We're now going to hear song, Who Ye Say I Am. Who Ye Say I Am.
Thank you, Toyo. All right. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 talks about spiritual warfare. In verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, in his mighty power. Uh, just as an aside, the weapons that we think of as weapons, the weapons of man are of no use in this battle. It's a spiritual battle. Verse 11, put on this whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles or schemes of the devil. Uh, take your stand. And verse 12, for we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavy places. These words of Paul alert us to the fact that there's an unseen spiritual battle going on. You and I, and he's you and I as Christ followers, if you're not born again by the Spirit of God, this will not speak to you because you don't have the born again experience which enables you to use these tools. So I urge you, if you've never been born again by the Spirit of God, to do so today. All it requires is coming before God and asking for forgiveness, asking God to please take over your life and help you and uh that's called repentance and when we change the direction we're we're moving in life from one direction our way we stop and change and turn and go god's way that's when we are born again by the spirit of god when we have faith to believe that god is the ultimate uh, truth total truth absolute truth and we understand that our lives are to be lived consistent with the life uh, that Christ set forth for us. You and I are, are involved as Christ followers in this spiritual battle, and we stand no chance without the spiritual armor that God provides. Trusting God is our sole pathway to victory. It's important, though, to recognize that we come from a position of victory and not defeat. 1 John 4, verse 4 says, Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. You 
sometimes I think we, we don't remember, we fail to remember that Christ is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us and dwells in us. And that's what he refers to when he says, the greater is he who is in us. It is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is greater and more powerful than Satan and his demons. Well, our enemy, there's three characteristics of our enemy. Satan and the demons of this world are not visible, but they are very real. First, our enemy is powerful. They are called the world rulers and powers of this present darkness, powerful. And, but power can be used for good or for bad, but Satan, our enemy, is wicked. He uses the, his power for evil and for destructive purposes. His purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. He plants seeds of doubt, fear, and guilt in your head, in my head, and would steal our hope, steal our peace, steal our joy, and take away any serenity that we have. Our enemy is powerful and wicked, but not only that, third, our enemy is cunning. Paul speaks of the wiles and schemes of the devil. We are seduced into compromise and error, and even persuaded that the demonic forces do not exist. Well, only the power of God can defend and deliver us from the might, the evil, and the craft of the devil. Verse 13, therefore take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand your ground. Paul is, is concerned that as Christ followers, we be stable and strong in Christ. The armor that he sets out here, the belt, the body armor, shoes, shield, helmet, sword. Uh, they are the metaphor of the full armor of a heavily armed soldier. This is equipment that is forged and furnished by God, but we have to put it on to utilize what he gives us. And when we embrace what God provides, we have all that we need. In the power of the Spirit of God, we are loving, not hostile. We're humble, not prideful or arrogant merciful, not judgmental. It is truly a paradox here because love is more powerful than hostility. Humility is more powerful than pride or arrogance. I'm talking about in spiritual warfare, in spiritual terms, and mercy is more powerful than criticism or judgmentalism. All right, let's get into these uh, uh, Weapons. Verse 14, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. First, the belt of truth. Truth. Truth is the revelation of God in Christ and in scripture. Uh, that revelation explains everything in life from origin of the universe and, until today. We have the origin of the universe, we have creation, we have uh, the fall of man, and we have redemption. Those are the significant events of absolute and total truth. Truth dispels the weight of lies and sets us free. Objective truth brings order and stability to our life. But the devil fights with lies, and sometimes his lies sound like truth, but only believers have God's truth, which can defeat the devil's lies. It's not only the objective, total, absolute truth that the Bible is. Truth is also sincerity and integrity in the inward person, the inward parts, ourself truth in the inward being. The light of inward truth combats the hypocrisy and deceit of darkness. We don't have to say one thing and do another. We can be the same person consistent with integrity. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14, verse 6, there is a very powerful move in academia and the university when you go to university you learn that uh, not everybody thinks like church people think 
and that uh, is is so true. I, I I spent four years at Cornell, and I was 18 when I went there, and 21 when I left. And it turns out they have a belief system that goes like this: there are sciences, hard sciences like physics and chemistry and engineering. Uh, they feel like those deal in facts. Those kinds of sciences deal in facts that are binding on all people, and it's a rational uh, choice, fact system. Uh, on the other hand, things like philosophy, sociology, anthropology are deal with not facts, but simply value choices by a particular group. And those are non-rational, in other words, not binding absolute knowledge. And so Christianity in a university setting is just a, a subset of something called metaphysics in philosophy, and it gets pretty short shrift. And uh, relativism is the idea that each cultural group has its own truth. What is true for one is not necessarily the truth for another. But the Bible is clear. It is absolute truth. God is absolute total reality. Just so is Christ and the Holy Spirit. You know, if all truth is subjective, then we can lead ourselves astray, far astray, even to the point I, I can almost imagine how Nazi genocide came about if, if one man's truth is, is different from another man's truth. The devil fights us with lies, and sometimes his lies sound like truth. But I believe there is a, uh, we believe as Christians, we believe there is an absolute truth. And uh, it governs all sciences, all studies of man, all truth is God's truth. And truth has power. I, during the years that I spent presenting cases to juries, juries see through pretty quickly a false story and they decide accordingly. C.S. Lewis wrote a book, wrote several books, many books, but he said there's really just three choices we can make about Jesus. One, he is Lord. Two, he is a liar. Or three, he is a lunatic. And is Jesus who he said he was? It's up to us to decide. Was he a lunatic? Not likely. Was he a liar? No. Is he then Lord, just like he said he was? And we believe that he was. Jesus is absolute, total reality. When this universe comes to an end, what will be left is God, Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and those who are born again by the Spirit of God. Truth is our anchor in an unstable world. I remember when I went to college, I, I tried looking at everything. I took courses in biology, psychology, but I also took courses in Taoism, Buddhism, and metaphysics. It was a wide assortment, and uh, I was pretty much lost in the midst of all of that. I'm grateful that at a later time after college, the Bible became real to me. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit became real to me. And I hope that has been your testimony as well. Believers have God's truth, which can defeat the devil's lies. Well, not only truth, the belt of truth, but secondly, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness refers to God's initiative in putting sinners, us, right with him through Christ. It is our being able to stand before God without condemnation, without guilt or shame. It is the righteousness of Christ imputed to us. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, verse 1. It also refers to inner righteousness of character and conduct, which believers pursue in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. It is the righteousness of God planted in us. The devil often attacks our heart, the seat of our emotions, our self-worth and trust. But God's righteousness is the breastplate that protects our heart. What we hear from Satan is, look at you. You're not good. You've never been good. You don't deserve this standing with God. 
we hear this all the time. We have doubts, we have fears, we have anxieties. And this is what uh, the armor of God helps protect our heart. When we are God-led, we can choose to do the right thing. God's righteousness is the body armor that protects our heart and ensures his approval. Third, the gospel boots of peace. Peace. It sure would be a good thing to have peace in these uh, cities that and last night and the night before had such riots and, and lack of peace. Our peace with God and with each other through Christ gives us a firm and stable position with which to fight evil. Peace also refers to the power of the gospel to free others from the tyranny of sin and death. It includes our, wit our readiness to bear witness to Christ as God's peacemaker. Jesus said he left us with gifts of peace and joy, shalom, wholeness, harmony. In the kingdom of God, there is no discriminatory distinction between any people group. There's no male, no female, no black, no white, no rich, no poor. The good news is for all persons, all of us are sinners saved by the grace of God. What a wonderful thing. The devil wants us to think that telling others the good news is worthless and hopeless task, but God gives us the motivation we need to proclaim the true peace that is available in God. Now, next is the shield of faith, the shield of faith. We are to be fully persuaded of the truth of all of God's promises and his power. The word refers to the shield, the long shield, which covers the whole body. The flaming darts include false guilt we carry sometimes, uh, doubts, and I don't believe there's a single Christ follower who does not have doubts from time to time. Disobedience, rebellion, lust, malice, fear, temptations. Faith embraces the promises of God in times of doubt and depression and faith. And, and, and depression and faith lays hold of the power of God in times of temptation. I don't know if you're going through a particularly hard time right now, but sometimes we feel like we're in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm. We've got a song about that, and we're gonna play that right now, In the Eye of the Storm. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling. Between the black sky and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain behind me. In the eye.
comes in and the doctor says I've only got a few months left It's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing I can barely take a breath And when it takes and steals my baby girl And there's nothing I can do My only hope is to trust you Thank you, Toya. In verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Our hope of salvation both purifies and comforts a soul. Satan would have us despair and be in depression about this, but our hope in Christ enables us to trust in God in all circumstances. Salvation includes forgiveness, deliverance from Satan's bondage, adoption into the family of God, and future resurrection, glory, and Christ likeness in heaven. You know, God takes us as we are, but He begins a process of change in us, a multi dimensional process. The devil wants us to doubt God and our salvation. The helmet of salvation protects our thinking and keeps it right. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God has invasive power being sharper than any two-edged sword. The spirit utilizes the word to convict, rebuke, correct, comfort, and exhort. It is effective and powerful. The word of God hid in the heart preserves and keeps us from sin. We're to read, study, memorize, and meditate on the word for wisdom and guidance, for hope, for peace, for joy. Recall Jesus' response to Satan in Matthew chapter 4, the only weapon of offense listed. Psalm 119 verse 11 says this, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I can't stress enough the importance of knowing scripture, of memorizing a sufficient amount of scripture so that the Holy Spirit can use that to bring truth to our thinking in times of temptation or in times of dis distress. Finally, we're to pray continually in the spirit. It is to pervade all of our life as an expression of our dependence on God. We're to pray at all times with perseverance. We're to pray for all the saints in Christ. We're to keep alert in prayer. We are to pray in the spirit. These are the pieces of armor that God gives us. The devil fights with lies. God gives us truth. The devil attacks our heart but God sees righteousness in us. The devil wants us to think that telling others the good news is worthless and hopeless, but God gives us the peace that comes from good news. While we see the devil, what we see are the devil's attacks in the forms of insults, setbacks, and temptations, and guilt and shame, but God gives us faith to overcome. The devil wants us to, to make us doubt God, Jesus, and our salvation. But 
God gives us the helmet of salvation to protect our mind from doubting God's saving work for us. The sword is the only weapon of offense in this whole list. There are times when we need to take the offensive against the devil. When we are tempted, we need to trust in the truth of God's word. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for these moments that you've given us this morning to look at your word and the uh, that highlights here in Ephesians 6 the the spiritual warfare that's ongoing even though we don't sometimes recognize it. God, help us to be sensitive and uh, to you to know what's happening in, spiritually in our lives. And God, I pray that we would avail ourselves of these pieces of armor, of these helps that allow us to function as Christ followers in the way that we should. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to play about half of the song in the eye of the storm, if that's all right, Toya. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out, from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family I can feel the rain behind me In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war thank you for being part of this service. I guess that closes out our service and we can just chat and unmute if